PlayStation. Uh, yeah, I don't know if like, you know that. That's the thing where, you know, PlayStation is where the cultured gamer is. Xbox, just shooter. PC, bunch of perverts. All right? So it's one We of can't those comment things. on that. But. <laughs> I mean, perverts slash culture, that's my intersection. Yeah, okay, so. okay, okay. I'm glad that it's right there. We've got it all covered. Right there for you. Yeah. You're a big time streamer now, of course, on Twitch. Big Everybody time. This has every, been huge. the biggest. Every Monday. Every Monday. Every biggest, Monday Wednesday, craziest yeah. transformation. I know. I don't even recognize myself. Manon now plays more games than I do. I'll see Manon play games and I'll be like, damn, I haven't played that one yet. Yeah. Chance of Sonar. I just played. And you just, you you just, just told bonded me over you Andy hadn't. about that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You haven't played that one yet. I haven't played that one. It it's sounds great. great. Play Chance of Sonar. That's what everybody says to me, too. It's so yeah, fucking yeah, good. Yeah. And it's a French game, so yeah. I get it. It's yeah, an extra well, bonus. Now you, see, now you're just me. playing favorites. French nah. games. French games are funny. They're like. In what way? What does that mean? Please go on the record. What do you mean about French games? Well, like, so background, my first. Hardcore gaming machine was the Amstrad CPC, which was an, an 8 bit home computer in the UK. Like in the UK, we didn't do consoles. Mm -hmm. You had a Spectrum, that was the punk rock one, right? Sure. That was the cheapest one, it was literally made of cardboard. Yeah. And then there was the Commodore 64, which yeah, I don't know the Commodore 64 was if you were, you were rich parents. Yeah. Right? Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. And it did nice music and stuff. Yeah. And then the Amstrad CPC was uh, made by Alan Sugar, who was our Donald Trump. Okay. Like, like the Apprentice started with Alan Sugar, and okay. then they brought it over here. So Alan Sugar is is he's he's not as Trumpy as Trump, but sure. he's in that world. Okay. Right? Okay. So he created all this was actually his fault for the okay. original Apprentice. Okay. But he made a home computer, the Amstrad CPC, and it it wasn't as sexy as the Commodore. Sure. And it was not punk. Like my parents bought it because they thought it was educational, right? It was yeah. it was, and it had word processing on it and stuff. Yeah. Uh, so, if you were in the playground in the UK, most people had the Spectrum, were handing out the Spectrum games. Cool kids are like, come around my house and you can see my Commodore 64. You can listen to some real music it's and there's some digitized speech or whatever. Amstrad, not cool. But, uh, two cool things about the Amstrad. One, the UK, all the cool UK gaming journalists started on Amstrad Action, which okay. was the Amstrad magazine. It was a cool magazine. Okay. But number two, in France, the Amstrad. Hey, I, I was like, I forgot it where we were. I going. know, I was I'm just mesmerized. Bro, you for Gary Witted to bust through the wall to talk about UK gaming. The the Amstrad was the big machine, so mm, it was yeah. the cool machine, and all the games were it. So, if you were a, an Amstrad gamer starved of content, you could get French games, oh. sneak them in, and the French games were always perverted they and weird. They played terribly. <laughs> Like oh, the gameplay no. sucked, yeah. But they were weird and cool. So like Captain Blood, uh, there was like the the Cocktail Vision games that were somewhat sexy or not sexy. Uh, like Time Wars was a big one. Like all these weird kind of adventure gamey yeah, kind yeah, of games, yeah, yeah. played awful. Okay, looked beautiful because of that like tradition in France of like the arts and cinema and painting yeah, yeah. and stuff. Um, and it's kind of still like that to this day, right? Yeah. You think like, oh, you know. Yeah, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna diss anyone, but like, <laughs> like, but there is still that sense of them being slightly mm -hmm. left field, Those slightly night always folks. gorgeous looking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. always mm -hmm. gorgeous looking. Yeah. Um, very much still in love with that classic adventure game. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. Kind of, it was always on the periphery. Um, I'm gonna need to play a lot more games to even come up to your level. But this is like historical <laughs> stuff, man. This is well, like going back to the <laughs> yeah. I don't, you know, I think obviously the language divide, cultural divide, whatever, you talk about Western games and blah, blah, blah. I don't know a lot about French games, but you say that and that's so interesting because, you know, when I think of a French game developer, I think of Interior Night, who just did As Dusk Falls, a very adventure-like mm -hmm. game. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, Quantic Dream, who, of course... And you got, like, Plague Tale. That's yeah, French, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Similarly, like, looks amicia, gorgeous amicia. story. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Damn, it's like that. Whole blew thing. my mind. Look at that. This guy knows stuff, ladies and gentlemen. Huh? He made a Walking game. That's what we're talking about. Even if you've made, what's a big game? Like e Star Halo. Starfield. You're, you're in. The, you're you're right there. They're repping Starfield. <laughs> guy, I'm Todd Howard. He's right there with me. You know I was. I mean? I, Xbox told me that was my most played game of last year, though. Uh, nice. Apparently. Good um, job. Here's the thing. Yeah. There was one thing because I watched that one. Yeah. You said something. Yeah. And you were, were talked down. Was Blessing on that as yeah, well? Yeah, he was, yeah. Blessing and, and, and Rebecca Rev. both were like, shh, no, shh, Greg. And you were like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll shh with this thing I'm pointing out. And I was watching it going, he's right. They're miss there's a big, he's What was missing. it? Or you can't say it yet? Um, I mean, it was, it, was, it was a smallish thing. There's a scene um, where the character of Sophia mm -hmm. playing the role of Antonia. Mm -hmm. Remember the names? Uh, cries. Mm -hmm. 
And you were yeah, like, was, oh, there's got to be more to this, right? Yeah. And they were like, oh, no, she's just like stressed, whatever. And I'm like, no, that actually ties Greg, into a lot of Greg. the, the law. <laughs> Who are you calling? <laughs> Rebecca. You're telling them. That's good. I was seeing her later today, so <laughs> don't upset too much. Hello? Hey, Red Valentine, it's Greg Miller from Kind of Funny. You're live on the stream. How are you? I had a feeling. I knew you were recording right now. Hello. <laughs> I just wanted you to know that Sam Barlow's here, and he says that I was right during the spoiler cast, and you talked me down, and you were wrong. So I just wanted to let you know that even though you have there all these no awards. There is no official hey! canon. <laughs> even though you have all these awards, and IGN's so cool, Rev, Greg still got it. You, you want to know something, Greg? No. It's my oh, time, oh, all right? It's my time. I don't want to know anything she has to say right now. That's great. My oh, time! Wow. Look what you've done, Sam. Wow. <laughs> Created an immortality You should monster. never give me anything. <laughs> an award, a little bit, give me an inch? No, don't give me any of that. And, and people have pointed out that uh, immortality was originally teased as Project A, and then uh, we just teased Project C and D. Mm. So there's like a missing B. B is the one that, as an idea, is like 80% done in my head. Okay. That was me going, how do I go beyond immortality in terms of like, of, of this particular vector, like, how do you keep going sure. in this direction? And I was like, that's... There was a tweet. That could be the one that, like, kills if I, if I actually keep this, my foot on the studio. gas pedal. <laughs> this could be, like... There was um, a tweet that was, like, in the next Sam Barlow game, he just comes to your house and kills you. <laughs> I was like, yeah, that's, like, I feel that like... Would it, be it's cheaper, gonna get that would be cheaper. That would be a lot cheaper than making a video game. That's a lot of um, murder, though. This is, this is where they film... Uh, this is the only sunny in Philadelphia building. Oh, no way. I didn't know that. You know, I, so in the, I don't, I've never watched it. You know the opening title is this like green doors or yeah. something? Yeah. That's this building. Oh, oh wow. my God. And it's I've only since discovered, we also filmed Telling Lies here. Oh uh, wow. Since discovered, <laughs> it's, it's, so it's in every movie. I was watching what? this weird Jane places. Fonda 80s, oh 80s movie God. and she's in it and I'm like, oh it's. So it's, Jane Fonda walked these halls. This is our most expensive fuck, scene. Fuck, 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 fuck. <laughs> Are we Why? allowed to curse on the show? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I'm just reading the line. No, I, don't get mad at me. It's like the game's taking care of that for us if yeah. we're not allowed to curse so, on the show. Yeah. So this, this involved the most research, this scene. This one? Because I was like, when did someone first say fuck in a movie? Oh. And there is actually some debate. Okay. And I went into this with the wrong information. I thought there's a movie called What? Ever, it's, it's such a 70s movie or 60s movie called Whatever Happened to Watch Him Call It. And it has, um, oh, the uh, Mick Jagger's girlfriend who rides my. Marianne Faithful. Marianne Faithful's in it. And Marianne Faithful says fuck in this movie. Uh -huh. and, a, and a lot of the trivia sources will tell you that was the first time anyone ever said fuck in a movie. Uh, apparently it's not true. There is one other. You got it. But I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is the point where, like, there was this sea change in like what you could put on screen and just the ability to say fuck, right? You've gone from like Hitchcock's Psycho where it was the first time anyone had ever seen a toilet flush really? on screen. That was like banned. So and, and Hitchcock's trick was uh, in Psycho, she throws the evidence down the toilet and flushes it. Yeah. So when the ratings people were like, you can't show you can't this. Show he was like, I have to because this is the only shot that reveals this plot element. And they were like, God damn it, Hitchcock. You got course. me again, um, Hitchcock. <laughs> so this, this, this was a lot of research, but then this had the so most funny. extensive CGI work. This, <laughs> this scene? This, this what scene? Because this scene, his mic was on show. Oh, no. And because it's all grainy, people are going to spot it. I don't know. But there's like behind Where? him at the start, there's like a crocheted blanket. Okay. And yeah. so we had to like, or at some point, the camera, maybe when the camera goes in, so we had to like digitally erase and, and, because it was, it's the weird thing with this stuff, right? Is because you want it to be as authentic as possible. Mm -hmm. We couldn't have any modern CGI or any modern filming techniques involved. Mm -hmm. But then you're like, but also we, so you couldn't see the film. There, this thing behind him. Yeah. There's a, there's a oh. lot of. That's like the hottest oh, thing in the world shit. to paint out. So you're out. telling me, yeah, this is the real blanket over here, and this is. There's, the there's a, blanket. there's a whole section where wow. part of that is, is painted Look out. Look at us. I would about never it, you know. know. What I, mean? I mean, every time I talk to Sam, Sam I learn about him. It's one of those where you're so, like, because there were takes else. where the, the, the pack wasn't in there, right? But we were like, yeah, oh, I yeah. really like this take. I thought the CG. I can't click on it. Because <laughs> I was referencing things like, so like, I'm obsessed with Nick Rogue. He did this movie, Performance. 
has all this Mick Jagger and everyone has all these crazy sex scenes in it. And you, I remember watching a documentary and Nick Rogue is like, oh, we had so much fun filming this. Like I was in there with a the camera in the most of this tangle of naked bodies. No one knew who was touching who. It was so crazy, man. And you're like, ah. and then you, you, <laughs> you, you, you see that and then it cuts to one of the actresses now yeah. being like, I actually found it very uncomfortable. Yeah, and then you sure. let yeah. one of the other actresses actually ended up taking her own life and you're like, oh. Jesus Christ. And, and so then when we were filming this and talking to Gene, the intimacy coordinator, it was yeah. like, so Gene comes in with a whole bag of tricks that's like, if we're shooting an HBO show, this is how you make it look like you're seeing this. And you see this and we, we break it down into shots. Mm -hmm. Then you're like, oh, but we're going to have an uninterrupted one take. And we want it to look like they were filming without an intimacy coordinator. We want it to feel yeah. like it and was And like she might be being pushing. exploited yeah. by the director. Like that's the thing that's hard is like how do you show exploitation without creating something that's, that's exploitative. But I think like it strikes a really good balance also because I don't, for yeah. me it's like, yes! <laughs> For it me, begins. You're, yeah. so there is no <laughs> For me, it's also like there's different. There is a difference between sex scenes and scenes of sexual violence, and I think sure. like there's like those are already very distinct. And then, and then the whole thing with sex scenes and like the male gaze and all of that is like, I mean, you you know, on on some level, I feel like your hands are sort of tied because it, the second you're showing nudity and like female nudity like there it like that is going to be seen in a certain way by a certain so it's just you know and and I don't think it's like inherently inherently but I mean you're tweeting about this all the time like how everybody's scared of sex scenes in movies now and it, and I think Paul Mescal just said something like that as well it, it seems to be that like there's also like an aspect of like we don't want to be like puritanical about this, and we want to represent the yeah, era. Yeah, it's a real hard wanna... line. I mean, the, the interesting thing for we me did our was best. Uh, oh, this gets right to the heart of the matter. Like this, I'll this get is. Out of here. I'll get I don't. So I don't do. I don't do Easter eggs, right? I kind of. Ugh, I don't like Easter eggs. Yeah. They used to. They had to put a gun to my head to put Easter eggs in Silent Hill when I was working, and I was like, please. And they were like, it's important. You have to have the dog ending, and I'm like. Um, but this is, I guess, okay, an Easter egg in that like this is a recreation of what was my favorite painting. Oh, uh, mm. gr growing up, there's this painting by Balfour's called Sleeping Girl, and it's like the sexiest. It's a tight. It's seen it in real life. I think it's at the Tate in London. It's like this big, uh, basically of this this girl sleeping. But it does all the things that I'm interested in. In that, you look at it and you're like, oh, from one hand, this is a, a beautiful woman sleeping, and and in the painting, you just see one nipple. Right. Ah. Uh, right. But it's clear in the painting that she's maybe pretending to be sleeping. So she's aware that she's being looked at. So you to get all these layers. Um, but it's fundamentally like quite a sexy painting. Um, but there's no then, nudity in this one, actually. No. This wasn't then, even in the, yeah. Then you learn, like, Balthus, for all his career, he would be painting lots of stuff of, like, pubescent girls and things. And, like, David Bowie was a big defender. Like, like all these people were like, Balthus is an artist and defending him. Now he's dead, and you did. And so I grew up being like, oh, yeah, he's, he's exploring these themes, but he's doing it in a genuine way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I feel like this is just constantly the cycle we're in now, where you're like, oh yeah, Louis C.K. is is just doing all this great material about how awful the male psyche is. And then you're like, oh, actually. That's, that's pretty why. awful. And that's <laughs> pretty awful. Now you look at the evidence, you go back and you go, actually no, Balthus was bad. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this, and, and actually there is there is a hidden layer to the scene where they talk about that. <laughs> the whole reason for the character tie plays of Carl Greenwood's existence is so like a big, a big source of, of inspiration on this project was uh, on my t-shirt. It was Jean Seabrook, okay. a real life actress. Very tragic life, makes you very angry. Uh, and, um, and and also the parallel with Jane Fonda, we're talking about. So yeah, Jean Seabrook, Jane Fonda, both active around the same time, both get very involved in activism. Um, Jane Fonda obviously has a very successful career and survives all of the, the various things. And Jean Seabrook does not. Um, it's part of Jean Seabrook's story where uh, she has all these terrible marriages. Uh, she's mistreated horribly by her male directors and uh, she does a film with Clint Eastwood. Uh, and uh, it's like a Western, uh, something, something wagon. Mm -hmm. During the filming of it, her and Clint Eastwood have this affair which is incredibly life affirming to her. She's like, this is the happiest I've been, like I feel seen as a person. It's this beautiful, wholesome relationship. Yeah. And she's expecting when they finish rapping that this will continue. Sure. They wrap the movie, Clint Eastwood's like, chill, this was just like a movie thing. Sure, yeah, you were. Yeah. Later, yeah. fucking crushing for it. Uh, so that combined with subsequent stuff that uh, Eastwood did, especially to his ex-wife, makes me really just hate Clint Eastwood. Like just with a passion. 
Uh, so for this movie, I was like, <laughs> you're an wanna, ocean of stories. I got, I know, I know. Like, it's so good. I, I want to, <laughs> I'm going to create a character and Jesus, does Ty look like a young Clint Eastwood? He does. He also he looks does. like you a look young at, Elvis Presley. Because yeah, you look, you look at photos of young Clint Eastwood. He was so hot, uh, like yeah. smoking, just incredible. And I was like, we're going to have this character who's going to be young Clint Eastwood, right? Who is uh, this conservative West Coast actor who has all these isms and is a very unadjusted, who's in, in, and we're gonna bring him to the East Coast into the midst of this boiling pot of gender and sexuality and, and, and kind of progressivism. Uh, and the point for me was, Marissa is gonna fuck with this guy. Like, she, I want her to- This is a perfect to, scene, actually. So, so there are lots, you know, in terms of crossing those boundaries, like, there are scenes where she is, doing things in the casting. She is playing with him in scenes in ways that are totally inappropriate. It, it, and and are what a lot of men were doing to women, right? And yeah. it's like, well, there's some complexity there because in some ways it's a bold thing, but it's also the same thing that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, so this whole thing was written, like, let's just destroy Carl Greenwood as a character. And like in this scene, I, this was another one where I did tons of research because they, <laughs> they ask him how many women he slept with, right? Because yeah. he's the chauvinist pig. Yeah. I have so much information up here of like how many people different actors slept with. Like what was the record? How many people did BT sleep with? And there's like some of these numbers, you're like, how many times a day did they have to have sex to, make, to, hit, this, to, to hit, hit these numbers? They had quotas. Um, yeah, they, 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 they're they on the HBO quota. <laughs> but yeah, no, yeah, this, I just, I love the line and it's the fact that it's delivered without you seeing uh, this guy's face where he's like, oh, if I was gay, like you would think it was cool that I was sleeping with all these and people. Like, yeah, but yeah. And he's like, but you're not. And it's just like, boom, you got it. Like I had a meeting with some people and, and I was, I think at the time we were having immortality. So I was explaining it to them and the guy goes, I don't get it. What are the, what are the two choices? And like in his head, that kind of Bandersnatch format of yep. two choice, yeah. two choice was everything. That's what yeah. it was. Guys, thank you so much for coming by. Thank you so Thanks much. Thanks for having us, this man, and for great. continuing to... Oh, I'm always behind you guys. Both of you know that for anything... Especially on PlayStation 5. Exactly, <laughs> on PlayStation 5. Now, when there's a platinum trophy. A Christopher Tennant obsession with, like, you watch Tennant, right? Yeah, of course. Well, Christopher Tennant, Christopher Nolan. Yeah, yeah. Watch Tennant. I saw a, a critique of that movie, and I actually love that movie, uh, of, like, this is just Christopher Nolan going, look how cool it is to rewind shit. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I developed an obsession of like, isn't it cool to rewind smoke? But don't do it on this scene, Sam. I'm doing because it at the right speed. Where... <laughs> It'll be good. They're not talking about sex. But like seeing Wait for the hap cigarettes in reverse. Sure. So cool. Like I could literally, <laughs> I was like, you know, is this game going to work? I don't know. Is this structurally going to work? And then work? you saw the smoke. And then I'm go like, in if it's like, just 10 hours, if I get to be like, whoa, yeah. oh, look how cool it looks. Then and you'll the hair, be happy. Like there's a couple of moves, just seeing people's hair sway around and go backwards. It's just great. Fun hearing stuff. people talk backwards. Oh, never, fun, kind never of like, ending source of fantasticness. That whole like that satanic story. thing, like if you play, you know, playing songs. Yeah, 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 that's fun. They finished Nimona, and this was so beautiful. Uh, they came to me and they said, until I read this book, I didn't know stories could have sad endings. Aww. And it was the first time. But then we discussed it and we were like, but there is like this hint. I'm like, so it's bittersweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they were like, actually, Dad, the best stories have bittersweet endings. Oh! Like, yeah, that's my vibe. Like, if I could that's play a game really sweet. where I feel sad, but it's not just like, it's not just, sad. just sadness, yeah, if yeah, there yeah, is yeah. that acknowledgement, that's the vibe I like. I love that. It's a good vibe. I like that too for all the weird little indies I play and tell everybody else to play. So that's good. <laughs> Okay, Great. gentlemen, we're going to just do a quick standby screen and then come back and we got to unlock Solid Snake in Fortnite. So don't go anywhere. <laughs> we got to get Snake, okay? But until next time, in case you're leaving, it's been our pleasure to serve you.